What's up, my friends? Welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. We're here with Eridan, Algren, Wynn, Alistair, and Brucey. We're going to head on down inside of uh, Redcliffe Village here a bit more. We got some stuff to turn in. And let's look at the journal before we actually do that because I feel like we also have... Hold on, let's say Redcliffe Village, Lost in a Castle. Make sure Valana made it out back into the village. Valana, the blacksmith's daughter, escaped back to town by going back... The way you came, you should check on her if you have the time to make sure she made it back safely. We also have that, but let's see, the collective here. You delivered 10 Lyrium potions to Night Commander Harris, return to the Mage's Collective, yes. Do we have anything for the Blackstone or regulars here? I don't think we do. Let's just head on down here and then turn this in, then head over to Redcliffe and cure Arl Eamon. If it even cures him, friends, it might not. Who knows? Should be interesting, huh? What is this? The deep dark before the deep dark before Let's get started. Dawn's first light seems eternal. But know that the sun always Make us blessings upon you, Warden. Well, let's go over here to the Mages Collective and turn that in. Little bump and grab thing here. Do we even turn it in? The Mages Collective thanks you. Make us smile upon you. You too, pal. Take it easy. You procured 10 Lyrian potions and gifted them to Knight Commander Hereth. The relationship between the Templars and Mages Collective is secure. Cool. One gold, friends. We are striking it rich. I'm telling you, we can buy all types of shit now. Let's go back to the blacksmith um, and get that going on because it's nice to turn in all this stuff so we can go ahead and get to the next mission, which is obviously the elf stuff. But let's hope Well, we're going to talk to people in camp as well. But let's hope it don't take the whole episode to do that. What's up, girl? Thank you, kind sir. I'd never have been able to return to my father if it wasn't for you. Damn right you wouldn't. My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this. A reward for your deed. It's dwarven made and should serve you well. Dwarven armor, huh? Hell yeah, I'll take that. That's a fine piece, blacksmith. And I would be honored to wear it into battle. Uh, at the warden's discretion, of course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. Owen's daughter, Valena, made it back to the village safely. Owen was glad to have her back and was very grateful to you. So we got a piece of... We actually got approval from Algren. Cool. Let's head up to the uh, castle here. Eamon, you awake? Hello? You return. Might you have news? What is our Eamon's condition? Unchanged, I'm afraid. We've tried more magical healing, but nothing works. As time passes, I become more and more convinced the urn might be our only hope. Well, here you go. Pouch of freaking ashes for you. You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. Where am I? Be calm, brother. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. I'm Connor. Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... It was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it.
This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? To be honest with you, I need your help against the Blight, and that is enough. I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. As you wish, then. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions of Redcliffe. You will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. There is much else to do now. Indeed. We have no way of knowing what Loghain will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man, one who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I was looking forward to meeting Loghain on the damn battlefield anyway, so... I guess we're not doing that. You would not walk away from that meeting unscathed. The Darkspawn slaughtered Kalen's forces, not Loghain's. He has strength we cannot hope to match. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. Then everything is for nothing? No, not at all. Loghain is responsible for heinous crimes, and I intend to see him pay. But our armies must be reserved for the Darkspawn, not for each other. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause, but we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative, but the unthinkable has occurred. You intend to put Alistair as king? Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet, a gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. Why do you need my blessing? None of this would be possible without you. You led Alistair here. You saved my life with the urn of sacred ashes. It's your lead I follow. I am a credible enough figure in this nation to call the landsmeet, but I hold no illusions that I could face Loghain without you. Surely you see that. A Dalish elf dabbling in human politics, friends. He can't face all these people, all these creditable humans without us. Consider we're a Dalish elf. I just find that a little bit funny. Wouldn't it be easier to simply to just kill Loghain? I'm not sure that would help our cause. We would become the criminals, and our accusations would become excuses. Furthermore, I'm not even certain where Loghain might be. What's stopping Loghain from attacking Redcliffe now that you're, you know, awake? Why do you think he had me poisoned? He wanted me gone without having to confront me directly. If I call for a landsmeet, refusing the compromise and attacking Redcliffe will only support our accusations. 
I'm sure he'd rather I died from the poison. Had the demon not interfered, that's exactly what would have happened. Do you think this lance meat will work? That depends. If we cannot get a consensus in the lance meat for Alistair, we cannot afford to oppose Loghain either. Does that mean Loghain could win? A man who killed his own king, who has gone mad with power? Perhaps. We must see that he does not. Then what about the Darkspawn? Ferelden must stand united to defeat the Darkspawn. A fractured nation will not defeat the Blight, even given my army and those gathered with your treaties. What if we support Loghain? Is that even possible? I hope that's a joke. I hope it does not come to that. If you are suggesting surrender, consider that he has already sought your death. You think he will spare you, knowing what you know? Yeah, he definitely probably won't, friends. What are my options, then? You have already found allies, but we need those to fight Darkspawn. I truly believe the Landsmeet is our best option. We could attempt to wage a military campaign against Loghain. But even if we win, would we have enough left to defeat the Darkspawn? No, but neither would Loghain. Perhaps Loghain gambles on this attitude. That everyone will decide facing the Darkspawn is more vital than facing him. So that he leads us against the Horde. Well, they do say Loghain's brilliant. It seems we have little choice then. Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord, other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I've done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? Well, he does seem earnest in his desire to repent, my friends. I mean, I'm still weirded out that he didn't like you're willing to repent and make up for your mistakes but he was not willing to come with us into battle which was stupid to me like very stupid and dumb i, I don't like that whole thing with jowan but he does seem like he is earnest in his desire to repent i guess oh that is unexpected and what would you have me do as the injured party my ability to see the merciful path is strained I honestly really don't care what you do. Do whatever you wish. I, I really just don't care what you do with him. Because he is not going to help us fight the Blight because he's too scared to even do anything. He was too scared to help take back the castle, so we have no use for him. So do what you wish. Do whatever you wish. I don't care. Then there is nothing more to say. Jowan, I hereby sentence you to death. May the Maker show you the mercy we cannot. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the Landsmeet. It will take some time to recall my forces and organize our allies. I would prefer to wait until that is done before calling the Landsmeet. In the meantime, I suggest you pursue the remainder of the Grey Warden treaties. We will need all the allies we can get if we are to defeat the Darkspawn Horde. All right, what do we got here? Specialization champion friends. Let's see. All even Garen. Nobility does not exist without obligation. We owe all we have, even our lives, to our land and our people. As the maternal uncle of King Kaelin, all even is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Redcliffe, while not large or especially wealthy part of Ferelden, is a critical strategic location. The fortress guards the western pass to that leads to Orlay, as well as a major trade route within Orzammar. A well-respected man, though not the most charismatic, King Kaelin once said of him, my uncle is a man everyone thinks well of when they remember to think of him at all. He fell ill with a mysterious condition that even magic could not treat. 
It was no common ailment, Eamon was poisoned by a blood mage, Jowen, who claimed to be working for Terran Loghain. The Earl's life was saved only by the most extraordinary measures, finding the urn of sacred ashes that remains of Andraste herself. So, it does bug me out a little bit about Jowen. We should have gave him back to the circle. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to second guess myself because what I what I said about Jowen, I feel like is true, and Aridin feels like that's the best way to do it. Like, Inside, outside, outside of roleplay purposes of our character here, it kind of hurts my heart a little bit that we kind of have him killed. But, Aridin sees Jowen as not a useful tool whatsoever. He's not, he's not willing to help fight. Like, I don't know what his motives were in the castle here. But if he was brave enough, he would have literally went with us and fought. You think he's going to go fight Darkspawn then? I mean, I just don't understand the whole process of, like, sparing him because you think that... Well, Aridin doesn't see the uh, process of sparing him because he didn't really wrong us. He wronged Eamon and his family, you know? And not only that, he... If there was a chance that we could have got him to fight the Blight, then so be it. That would have been great. But if we would have gave him back to the Circle, Aridin seems like he doesn't trust Jowen. So we give him back to the Circle, he might ultimately do harm to the circle which would undermine us in the fight against the blight so I feel like that was the best choice there but anyways gather the army use the great wooden treaties to gain help different factions or even has been revived and plans to call a lands meet in dead room in the meantime you must gather your allies using the signed great warden treaties so we have that let's go ahead well we leveled up friends not really much else to give us. We got assault here. Now I would say we are. Uh... Oh, we're probably done here. That's our end game build. All right. Well, let's head back to camp. Um, there's no point in sitting around Redcliffe. I mean, we could talk to him more. We are still not yet ready to call. You have restored Eamon. I am most. Rescue grateful. your treaties. It's up to him. What happens you next? <laughs> Alright, freaking blabbermouse. Let's get out of here. Go ahead and bullshit with Alistair, huh? You know, I've been thinking. Such a rare event, Alistair is worth informing me of, sure. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Funny, I'm sure. Just listen for a minute. Back when we left Goldana's. You told me I needed to look out for myself more than I do. I'm beginning to think you were right. I need to stop letting everyone else make my decisions for me. I need to take a stand and think about myself for a change. Or I'm never going to be happy. It's about time, Alistair, I say. Then from this point on, I'll be looking out for myself more. I should have done this a long time ago. I just wanted to thank you. You've been a great friend through all of this. The one bright spot in everything that's happened. You're a good friend too, Alistair. Let's go. We've got a lot left to do. Hell yeah, friend. Ask away. I had another dream about the Archdemon, you know. Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? I think we need to be extra careful, Alistair. Because the Archdemon kind of senses us now and knows where the hell we are. I thought we were already being extra careful. Does that mean we have to be extra, extra careful now? Great. There I was, enjoying my nap. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. It's definitely a fucking blight, Alistair. We see the Archdemon in the deep roads, man. Ask away. Of course. Tell me about the Grey Wardens, Alistair. I don't know nothing about them. Such as they are. Holy moly. Where's the nearest Grey Wardens uh, from here? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. 
I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Is there a headquarters somewhere? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. So what happens now that it's just two of us? I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. We will need to start rebuilding the Order at some point, Alistair, you know? I mean, eventually we would have to use the Joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the Joining. Or what's involved. I know it involves lyrium and some other magic and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. So what would happen if we just leave? Just left? You mean just left for Elden? I don't know. If there's an archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the Blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlais and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. Damn right, Alistair. Me either, pal. We're going to sit here and we're going to fight to the freaking death if we have to. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. Ask away. Take it easy. Have a good one, Alistair. What's up, Sten? What is your wish, Kadan? Let me ask you a question. I am hardly surprised. Never mind. Very well. Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Very well. You know, I don't think that dialogue ever leaves Sten's thing. Ever leaves his, uh... As you wish. His chain of dialogue there. So Sten's pretty much done, which is cool. What's up, Zev? What say you? Here to answer some questions there, buddy? By all means. Say ya. Have a good one. Here to answer some questions? Goodbye. See you later, Zev. Have a good one. I am listening. What the hell are you doing, Chael? Want to answer some questions for me? It doesn't have better things to do. Hell no, we don't. How did you end up in Hanleth, do you remember? Oh, yes. That I remember quite well. My former master, the Mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> I would have thought you would enjoy scaring humans there, Shale. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. But why were you out in front of the tower, Shale? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Bah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. Damn, Haggis. His wife? Hmph. 
I was once larger, ten feet tall, than the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down! Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. That damn painted shrewd! How could she, Shale? How does one even shrink a golem? With a chisel. And a lot of nerve. You don't like Wilhelm, I take it, Shale? He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Uh, fortune shale. Hell yeah, in fact. Good. Clearly, I am worth it. You remember anything before Hanleth? I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No. There are only images. I was somewhere dark. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? All right, is Shale done? Let's click on her again, see. I am listening. It doesn't have better things to do. Well, how did Wilhelm come to acquire you, Shale? That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a tig, he said, deactivated, with my control rod not far away. You don't know why you were there? I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Ah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. What was Wilhelm doing in the Deep Roads? It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he traveled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the Deep Roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure, before anyone was the wiser. Wouldn't that have been dangerous? Indeed. He had spells that allowed him to remain hidden and move quickly. But he had no defense against the Blight, and worried constantly that he would get sick. If any Darkspawn showed themselves, he fled. More often, he would have to fight other scavengers, dwarfs who had become tainted. In the end, it killed him. I mean, he found me there, right? <laughs> so if he hadn't found you... I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit, and I would be none the wiser. I don't think I was aware while I was there. Not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place, and I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing, never sleeping? <gasps> oh, I do not wish to think of that. You know where in the deep rose this was? No, that secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. Squish. Hell yeah, Shale. Let's move on, pal. On then. Let me ask Shale one more thing. I'm listening. To expand her dialogue here. It doesn't have better things to do. You watched a village day and night for years? I do not sleep, so yes. And I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants, all oblivious to it. Yes, that would be rather a horrid chill. Couldn't even imagine standing there for years and years and years just watching freaking... Villagers prancing about, sprinkling bird seed all over and having bird shit all over. And then there were the birds. 
A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Sounds a little messy, Shale. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... Ugh, I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. Toodle Shale, have a good one. So Shale's done, Alistair's done, Sten's done, Zevron's done. Let's talk to Ogren. You saw it. Tell that thing to give it back. Are we having Algren time again? Only if by Algren time you mean... Uh, yes. <laughs> but that dog ruined it when he stole my pants. I'll show him. <laughs> yeah, I don't need my pants anyway. Algren, you're wearing your pants there, you big putz. Well, the dog doesn't know that. It will be his sodding downfall. You hear that, Nug Humper? I'm coming for you. Prepare to die. See ya, Ogren. Goodbye. What a freaking lush. Look at him. Come here. You there. Hi, you. <laughs> I've been watching you. Where can I get some sauce for that rump roast? <laughs> <laughs> right here, you mad dwarven stallion. Go and make yourself ready, woman. I'll be right there to see to it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Holgren, man. Go and make yourself ready, woman. I'll see right to it. <laughs> He'd come in his hand and fall the fuck over. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I was thinking, we've been through a lot together now. We're like old war buddies. So I figured why not invite you to share a drink, huh? A drink from my own stash, my family's recipe, and dedicated to my comrades in arms. Finally, I get to taste Algren's famous brew. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, the warden steps up. You handled that like a champion, my friend. <laughs> Most impressive. How do you feel? I feel great. You got any more of that urine, Ogren, or whatever the hell you do to make that shit? Oh, no. The rest is for me. You'd need to do something really unspeakable to get into the rest of my stash. I, uh, I just wanted to tell you, after all we've been through, you're like family to me. Closest thing I've had in years. A toast, then, to comrades in arms, Ogren. Aye, a toast with a dry cup. <laughs> You're not getting any more of my brew. So, do you want to talk about something? Let me know more about you. What about? Do you feel homesick for Orzammar yet? Aye, I do. A bit. A little bit. I bet, Algren. I miss my home too, friend. But well, talking about Orzammar, it was a grand place. I can see why you would miss it. When I was there, I thought it was a muckhole full of backstabbing, tin-plated, would-be tyrants. But it's also home. Flies live in piles of dung, but I bet they'd miss it when they're gone. <laughs> Still, I can't go back even if I wanted to. I'd rather be dead than be castless in Orzammar. I guess I'd rather be a useless lump of a dwarf out here than a useless lump of a dwarf back there. I don't find you useless at all, Algren. Nice of you, Warden. But I know what side of the house the Lou is on. Hey, let's go find something to kill, huh? All this talk makes my hands twitchy. Hell yeah, Algren. 23? Holy fucking moly, Ogren. Hey, Warden, you gotta hear this one. This human walks into a tavern, and there's an elf there, and she says, 
<laughs> As she says, <laughs> Spit it out, Ogren. Oh, yeah. I remember now. <laughs> Ready and goodbye. <laughs> what a schmuck. On your order, Grey Warden. You need anything? Uh, the Yarl was generous, but rushed. Certain areas could see improvement. We're a mercenary force, Warden. Much of our equipment is self-financed. Were you to commit additional funds, we'd upgrade as we saw the need. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn in shit, friends. What do we even have here? We got gems for the dwarves? Coins for all Eamon's knights. 30 sovereigns here. Let's do all of them. 10 sovereigns. 2 sovereigns. 50 silver. Um, the runes. What do we got? If we got master stuff, let's see. Journeyman, see you later. We are better with every step you take. Hell yeah, friend. <laughs> Right here, old pal. Right here, old pal. Let me ask more about you, friend. What about? See ya. All right. Have a good one. Aye. All right, then. All right, we got Lily here. Let's talk to Wynn. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? Hell no, Wynn. Why don't you tell me? What's there to hear? Well, I do know that they sort of round the skies on griffins. Griffins. <laughs> Alas, that seems to be the only thing people remember from the tales. The mighty flying mounts that bore the Grey Wardens into battle. Imagine raining death upon our enemies, when how freaking glorious would that be? Ah, yes, the glory days. It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Go ahead, Wynne. Does this story have griffins in it? Maker's mercy, it's like talking to a child. So does it have griffins in it or not, Wynne? Yes, there are griffins in this story. The blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums and stood before the armies of men. When griffins, please. Yes, griffins. Now listen to the rest of the story. The Grey <laughs> Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt. And then, demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice, the Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. What did... When did this happen? This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought. And yet, about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn. Taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries. But nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Wardens past. And now, it shall be your blessing. And your burden. Gee, thanks, Wynn. Tell me about the Griffins. What's on your mind? As a Grey Warden, I'll never live a normal life, will I? No, you won't. 
I guess I could try. Well, you're right, it wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't, would it? Being a Grey Warden is in your blood now. You can't escape it. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. Um, a little. I do, yes. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted that I would never have. Grass is always greener on the other side, when It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. Did you find anything? I must have looked tearful or made some noise, because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things. But she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason. And fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. Can't get enough of that religious claptrap. Huh, I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was 15, maybe 16, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest. But we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. <laughs> All this happy nonsense is going to make me throw up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hell yeah, Wynn. This shit is making me nauseous. And it's putting me to sleep. Hello. I'm just playing, friends. I suppose priests have to give up a lot too, Wynn. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life. As I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you. That you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty. And there is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours and their happiness is your happiness. Well, it won't be easy to live like that, when You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden. Or you can accept it and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. Thank you, and I appreciate it. What do you guys think? Shall we keep clicking on people more? <laughs> Expending all their damn dialogue? Better now than later. What's on your mind? Excuse me, Wynn. Can you uh, tell me anything about the circle? I will answer to the best of my ability. Get on with it. What was it like in the circle tower? I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. A single word spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync, and lack of focus. And we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. Danger from what, when? From fade spirits. If we were careless, they would enter our minds, and we would become abominations. Without the Circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the Circle. The joys of fellowship, in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the Tower, and I loved it. Take it easy, Wynn. Have a good one. So Wynn is done, I think. Let me click on her again. What's on your mind? Hello, Wynn. I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. Say ya. <laughs> Let me ask you something about the circle. Take it easy, Wynn. Oh, we got Liliana's stories, friends. Come on, let's listen. You've seen and touched Andras's ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth. The remains of the Maker's Chosen. They're kind of just ashes of some woman. Maybe it is belief and faith that imbues them with their power, 
or just maybe Andraste really was blessed by him. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. Why do you even revere Andraste? Why shouldn't I? I don't understand. We don't need Andraste if the Maker speaks to you. Oh, I see what you're asking. If the Maker has not truly abandoned us, why would Andraste need to intercede with the Maker on our behalf? I have never thought of this. I... I revere her because she's the Maker's divine bride. I do not have any other explanation. I guess we should uh, get moving, huh? You are right. Our demon is running out of time as we speak. Oh, disapproval from Liliana friends. Holy moly. Hey. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? I didn't really want to dig into the religions and tell her she's wrong. But... It was probably just best to move on there. At least I thought. Let me ask you something. Of course. You're a traveling minstrel. Do you have any stories to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Well, hell yeah. Tell me about Darkspawn, Liliana. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Know any stories from Orlai? Of course, Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orlai. Go ahead, Liliana. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Come on, Liliana. Suspense. Continue, please. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Did she win the Grand Tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the Knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the Joust and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Terrible fucking ending. It's the damn shame that the, uh... I guess this world was like that. It's probably still like that. Which is a damn terrible thing. You're saying that women can't be warriors? Get over your fucking high horse there. You know, I was hoping for a damn happy ending, Liliana. You done broke my heart here. 
The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Well, there you go. Change the story. Well, that's pretty freaking awesome, friends. It's sad that she had to die for what she believed and who she was. But at least she changed the, uh, the way Orlesian customs are, huh? You know any legends of uh, Ferelden? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Hell yeah, Flemeth. Morgan's mother was called Flemeth. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. She was probably all them, but she just looked like an average old woman to me that could turn into dragons. Well, if Flemeth really exists, she would be very, very old indeed. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth was once beautiful? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Ooh, the plot thickens, Liliana. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasen tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband, and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyever, they were captured by Conobar's men, and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Ooh. All right, friends, there's another story I want to hear, Liliana. You haven't told us any stories yet. Come on, tell us more. Which one? Holy moly. She just is a chatterbox here. You know anything about the Dalish? I know a little about your people, but I may be misinformed, and I would hate to offend you. I would not be offended, I guess. Let me know what you uh, know. I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the Elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great Elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the Elves were free. 
Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in a the land of their own. But the humans had to take that from us too. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The chantry says the elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the winter. During the exalted march of the dales, the elven cities were sacked, and the elven state completely dissolved. Some of the elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the Maker's Chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Mafarath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Mafarath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinter, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. Why did not Maker not save her with his power then? I have thought on this too. Did he withdraw his sight from her at that moment? Where were all the powers he bestowed upon her? This question has come to me many times and I have no answer. Perhaps there was no way for Andraste to return to the Maker but through her death. We will never know for sure. Alright friends, we're going to save here and when we head back, we'll obviously talk to Morgan because we missed her and then we'll head to the uh, Dalish camp. A long episode here, we're not going to read any codexes until the end of next episode. But when we head back, we are going to definitely head to the Dalish camp. At least we touched base with everyone in camp and now we are completely caught up. And then after our next main mission, we probably won't have much dialogue either. So it's good to get all these things um, done and dealt with because we are coming towards endgame, friends. Anyways, take it easy. Have a good one. As always, be safe out there. See you next time.